Yo, what's going on you guys? Drum Machine Addicts is back again with another highly requested tutorial and today we are giving our users an introduction to the Logic Pro X software. Now if you look on your screen after starting up the software, whenever you start a new project you always have a couple of options for tracks that you have to open up. You can either do an audio track, a software instrument track, an external MIDI track, or the other two that are listed up there. So to start out, we're going to add an audio track. All right, now would be a good time for noting too that most audio tracks show up as blue in the mixer. If we look to our top left, I'll start explaining some of the icons up here. Now, this right here that was open by default is the library button. If I go through here, I can actually change the icon of my instrument track, or excuse me, my audio track, to a microphone or something of the like so it helps me identify it better when I'm going to my mix later. So, let me reopen that now and show you some of the stuff I can pick. All right, notice I went to bright vocal and the icon change. Pretty much that's the basics of it, of what happens with the library button. And if we look at our audio track, you'll see that the icon changed as well. And you'll also see some of the normal things like record and input monitoring too. So if I wanted to record arm this track, I just click on the R like so. The track is now record and armed. Or if I want to do input monitoring, so now while I'm recording, I can monitor my input as well. And you sure hear the double feedback because all the audio outputs are the same for when I'm recording the tutorial too. And now when I turn off input monitoring, the sound goes back to normal. And of course, solo and mute. All right, let's get back to these icons at the top. Now, that I clearly stands for information and it gives you information about the track. So the top region shows you if you have anything concerning MIDI with that track, it gives you the information on that. But otherwise you get to look at the inputs and outputs that go along with this audio track. Minimize that. All right, and notice it already came with some plugins on it. So I already have an EQ and I already have a compressor on here as well too. In fact, it looks like there's a full effects rack on here, but that's neither here nor there because as you get into editing, if you're into mixing and mastering as well, that's something you're gonna tinker around with anyway. But notice on this channel strip too that you can also edit your inputs. So if you look at my track right now, it should be on input one. But if I wanted to switch it to bus one or input two, this would be the section to do that as well. Or if I wanted no input on it whatsoever. With that being said, we can move on to some of the other sections of Logic Pro X as well. Now, if you see, we already have selected our toolbar. I'll deselect it and reselect it so you can see how to get to it yourself. All right, that's our toolbar. Now you have functions here like zoom, split by playhead, nudge by tick. I mean, there are really cool things that really go in this section. If you're not into editing like that yet, you don't necessarily need to know them. However, if you are editing your own MIDI tracks and doing your audio in here, these are some really useful tips that you can actually use to make your track better. So we'll go over those in another tutorial, but just know for now, that's the quick way to get to your toolbar. Moving forward, this section is known as your smart controls. Essentially, the, all the stuff that you saw in the effects rack, it'll appear down here if you click that button. And then you can go ahead and mess with the knobs as you choose in a visual way if you're more of a visual editor or a visual learner. That's pretty much the gist of this section. The next section is going to be the channel strip. All right. So notice down here, you'll see that we have four tracks that look like aux tracks based on it, judging by that light green, yeah. And then we'll keep in mind too, again, audio tracks are always gonna be blue and the master track is in purple. But this is where you're gonna see the channel strip for everything that's in your project. So when you start having uh, 50, 100 track projects, it'll all appear down here and all you have to do is click that button at the top to get to it. All right, and that's an elongated view of it. And as you can see, that full effects rack is on that first audio track. Just to let you know that it's still the same track from up there, just replicated down there. Anyway, moving forward. Now to kind of wrap things up and to show you the rest of everything in Logic Pro X to give you a basis of 
so you know how to start your sessions pretty much. Let's go to the display mode. So at the top, this is called the display mode and this is how it looks by default, but you can switch it up if you want to. Click this button, go down and notice the clock change. Comes in handy, depends on your workflow, but it's something useful you should know just in case. All right, gonna switch it back to normal. All right, now this right here is the loop button. If I click this, you'll notice the playhead right here. It's grayed out, but it'll actually turn yellow. So that signifies that that section of the track is being looped. And the cool thing about it, if I deselect it, if I actually have audio already in there, all I have to do is click on that yellow and it'll loop it automatically. Boom, so now the track is looped and I can stretch it out as much as I want to. So now if I'm recording audio, it knows to loop it after 16 bars. Pretty handy. Now this key right here I clicked is called the solo lock button. Again, another advanced tool that you don't necessarily need when you're starting out, but it lets you solo regions and solo tracks depending on where you have it in the playhead. Something to keep in mind in a later tutorial. And then this is the count in button. So if I'm recording audio in the Logic Pro X, this will let me do a count in. If it's deselected and I press record, it'll just automatically go in like so. All right, I'm gonna record on my track. Oh, but first it wants me to select an input. I'm gonna set it to input one. Now my song is ready to record. And remember, this isn't selected, so it's just gonna start recording. And notice Logic Pro X automatically started recording. Let's go back. So if you noticed, it did a one bar count in before it started recording. So that's something to keep in mind when you're recording other artists or you're recording audio tracks or MIDI tracks. You wanna have that enabled in case you want that one bar or two bar lead in. All right, with that said, there's one more section we have to cover, and I'll cover it pretty quickly. Now, this section is going to show all the media that you have loaded up in the project. So if you also add some video stuff, a couple other things in Logic Pro X, it'll show up here too. This is where your library loops and stuff go, and from here you can literally just go down and drag and drop something into an audio track to use in the track in the future or in the present if you want to. Really just depends, but this is where everything is going to be located in terms of the content that you download with Logic Pro X. All right, so I just loaded up a blues stem that came with Logic Pro X. That's where all the audio files are going to be located that come with the software. Besides that, this is just a quick notepad for some of your notes when you're doing your session. Uh, whether you have some special notes that you're making about a vocalist or any type of effects change you're using, maybe presets, you can put all that here in the notepad section. And finally, this is going to be the track history to its left. And there you have it, guys. That's pretty much how Logic Pro X works. A very basic introduction. We're going to get more in depth with it in later tutorials. But if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up at drummachineaddicts at gmail.com. Don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend and subscribe to our newsletter for exclusive content. We'll see you next week. Peace.